Once upon a time, they used to say that the clothes made the man. Of course, I'm not sure we totally believe that, but first impressions do matter. Nowadays, though, that kind of a statement would get you in trouble. You're part of the patriarchy, I suppose. Over at the Walt Disney Company, though, when it comes to their cast members inside their parks, Disneyland and Walt Disney World, they have loosened the traditions. The attire that their cast members used to wear, well, those are no longer considered a dire thing to have to maintain. Tattoos are in vogue. Facial hair is fine. And if you have any kind of thing that expresses your identity, well, it is fine and dandy with the Walt Disney Company. But it may have had a dire impact on the way that guests experience the parks today. All right, folks, welcome back to another video of excellence here on the WDW Pro channel. I consider it a great honor each time I get to share my time with you and discuss the things that I think matter. Now, one of the things that you might not feel is terribly important is the way that people dress inside theme parks. But it turns out that it may have a more profound impact than perhaps we would ever consider. I began to consider the power of the first impression that the people inside the theme parks present when I received an email from someone who is concerned, a very long time employee of Disneyland, Disneyland in Anaheim, California. And so I would like to read for you this email that came my way, and I find it to be fascinating. I'll pause and give my thoughts at various points, but this, this is so heartfelt, and uh, I'm, I'm just so pleased that someone took the time to share this with me. They have requested that I keep them anonymous, and so I will do so. It says, Hi WDW Pro, I just wanted to write and tell you I enjoyed your video on the Disney look. I'm a cast member at the Disneyland Resort, and other than a brief uh, time not working there, I'm going to take out part of that so nobody can track on who this is, I have been there since the, uh, since well, for a long time. Currently, I am not working all the time, but I agree completely with your video. Originally, when I was hired, the Disney look was very strict. Now, I am a very vanilla type of person in that I have no tattoos or piercings, and other than having been coached back then for having a, uh, an interesting haircut, I've never had a problem with any of the rules. Through the years, they started allowing facial hair. First, the mustache became, uh, because the argument was, Walt himself had one. And more recently, beards, which that's fine as well because it's natural biology. I myself, I myself now sometimes sport a neatly trimmed five o'clock shadow. I'm not political, but I tend to be more conservative and definitely traditional. But since the company started showing which way they lean, and towards this whole woke political ideology, the traditional cast members such as myself just shake our heads and keep quiet for fear of retaliation or job security. And I think this is uh, interesting, folks. We'll pause here and let me give you my thought on this. Uh, it concerns me anytime I hear of, of employees of a company being in fear of talking about uh, their political opinions. Now, I, I don't think the workplace is a place to share your political thoughts, but if you if you think that by being a conservative or vice versa, if you worked for a company where you felt that being a liberal puts you at risk, uh, that's, that's not okay, especially when those companies are big, big companies and not uh, associated necessarily with any sort of ideology. The Walt Disney Company is supposed to be a big company that's open to everybody. It seems to me that this push for inclusion has excluded a huge chunk of the, the population. It says, this is why I never comment on your actual videos, as you never know if some Disney person will see it and fi uh, figure out who I am. But I really hate how trashy it now looks with fellow cast members proudly displaying tattoos, having half-shaved haircuts, and cow rings in their noses. Well, I re realized that when Disney said they were altering their look, that it was to be more inclusive, but in reality, we all know it was to justify their low wages and hiring. Ouch. Besides, nearly all millennials and Gen Z have tattoos and piercings nowadays, so excluding them would eliminate a lot of your workforce. Still, tattoos were never forbidden. You would just have to keep them fully covered at all times. It used to be special if you got to work for the mouse because the screening process was so difficult. I myself was turned down before finally getting in, and sometimes I think that was only due to a mass hiring because they needed bodies uh, for new theme parks. 
And folks, let me say this uh, at that point. This is exactly right. Because there was, in fact, a time when it was difficult to work for Disney. Uh, you know, everybody who was interested in this line of work wanted to work for the mouse. Because not only did Disney take care of uh, their guests, but they also provided for a tremendous work experience for their cast members. Now, I'm not here to tell you that cast members have always been paid extraordinarily well. But if this was something you were interested in, this line of this type of work, uh, Disney was the place to be. And, and what, what other place can you go and work in such a beautiful atmosphere? That has changed now. And you often hear that Disney can't find the people they need. And I think that's relaxed many of these standards. I think that's partly why we had a, a reporter for that park place who we had reporters there for about three weeks at Walt Disney World doing some research. And one of our reporters said that a cast member came up to them and started sharing uh, sort of intimate details of their family life with them, just, you know, as a part of a conversation and talking to them about the, the issues that they're having with their mom. This wasn't something prompted by the that park place reporter. It's just a cast member came up and started sharing. That's the kind of stuff that never happened in the past because cast members knew when they were on stage. They knew that they were part of the show. Continuing on with the email that we received. I worked at And in the past, some of the things that were encountered in the name of DEI uh, were a little bit frustrating. For instance, there was a bulletin board in the mansion break area highlighting Disney's new fifth key, which is now inclusivity. Basically, it was telling all of the mansion workers to cater to all these people wanting to use pronouns and the dress code for their identification as whatever. If you know the classic Haunted Mansion costumes, there's a mansion-made dress for the women and a butler suit for the men. But because of DEI, men can now wear the dress and women can wear the suit. It was very ironic that they said mansion costumes cannot be mixed and matched, but yet anyone wearing the maid top can now wear the butler pants. While the argument from the female cast members was because of comfortability, it's still an unpleasant look. While I'm all for other new attractions allowing females to wear pants, for Mansion it was an unnecessary change to someone's artistic vision they had when they designed the costumes. To be honest, I'm not sure how much longer I'll be working for Disney if this continues. I know I am bound to offend someone, and I refuse to use the pronouns. While I wouldn't be doing any of this out of malice, I just refuse to cater to anyone because of my own beliefs and because of my love for the Disney name or, well, what it once was. I've worked for a very long time at this company, and it, it brings me great joy to bring great happiness to others. But because of the activists who are now running the company, that happiness can only go so far. I've always said that you know it's really bad when In-N-Out Burger has more of a Disney look than actual Disney. And that's the email from uh, an individual who has reached out to us to share their thoughts, someone who has worked at Disneyland for a very, very long time. And I think that this is absolutely true, folks. You know, part of the appeal of Disney is that you are presenting a place that is separate, wholly separate, from the reality in which we all live. And when we are presented with people who have an appearance, a look, that reminds us of the modern world, it takes us out of those fabled, themed lands that we are supposed to be encountering. The story of the Haunted Mansion is exactly right as well. If you're a man, a biological male, and you want to wear the, uh, the Haunted Mansion dress, if that's Disney's policy, okay, go for it. And if you are a, uh, a woman who wants to wear the butler costume, okay, go for it, if that's Disney's policy. But you can see how these boundaries are blurred very quickly because it's, it's not just enough to now swap out these costumes. And by the way, if, if you go to the Haunted Mansion and you see uh, you know, a six foot four man in a uh, Haunted Mansion dress welcoming, welcoming you in, it's, uh, it's a little bizarre. But if, uh, uh, it, it's never enough, I guess, folks, because then they realize, well, the maid top and the male pants put together, that's the most comfortable combination. And so, people begin to take advantage of the system. They say, well, I'll wear these two items because they're the least cumbersome. I don't have to be uncomfortable now. I can put together these and I'll do it by saying that, oh, well, this is part of my identity. And so you can see how people begin to play the system. Well, 
I think there's a lot of playing of the system going on right now. And I think that Disney itself needs to get things under control. They need to go back to presenting people and their parks in such a way that it takes you to a place that exists outside of reality. I return once more to the anecdotal story I had when I walked into the parks recently. And without going into too much detail, because I don't want to give away the cast member, I walked into one of the parks and I was presented with a cast member wearing shorts who had a mascot for a different company tattooed all the way up their leg. Let me tell you, that's an odd thing. But that kind of odd thing can only happen when Disney changes the rules such that now someone can have a giant competing mascot, not just uh, emblazoned on their shirt, not just uh, part of some sort of flag they're holding, but no, so beloved that it is inked into their very own skin and then presented almost uh, as the highest form of advertising to every guest who walks by inside the Disney parks. It certainly is a different place than Walt may have envisioned. And maybe that vision that Walt had was better than what we have today. Well, folks, we've done two short videos today, both of them just me. I don't remember the last time this has happened, but partly that's because we're doing the Pro Show Live, 5 p.m. Eastern Time on the day of this video's release. Thursdays, 5 to 7 p.m. is when we do the Pro Show every single week, and we've got a big show with a ton of guests So we thought you might want to hear from little old pro for two videos. So make sure that you join us for the pro show. We have Alan Ng. It's going to be fantastic. We're talking about the Hollywood strike. We're talking about Lucasfilm, which is becoming even more of a dumpster fire than perhaps we had given it credit for being. And that is really saying something. All right. The conversation here has come to a close, but the commentary begins. Drop a comment down below. Let us know what you think. Do you believe that the Disney look has been degraded to the point that perhaps Disney should return to something more pristine? Or am I being an old fogey? And is everything just A-OK when it comes to displaying your identity through a number of myriad ways? Folks, if you like content like this, consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe, and when you click it, you stick it to the algorithms, it's the notification bell. And the same way we wrap up every video all the time, let's do it again. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and keep having fun. Make sure to catch The Pro Show Thursdays 5 to 7 Eastern Time. Entertainment Explained, The Culture Curve Conquered, live with Pro and all his friends. Oh. What are you doing? Well, you see... I wanted to get some inside scoops on Disney and their, uh, different corporations, if you know what I mean. So I figured, by looking to this fistbowl and sucking it randomly with my own energy that I pay for, uh, uh, you pay for, I could do the whole experience where you can be a master and spy on your targets. You're an idiot. If you want to get the inside scoop on Disney, or even other media organizations, you should check out ThatParkPlace.com and subscribe to WDW Pro's YouTube channel. That'd be way easier, more accurate, and, uh, less dumb. Are you saying I won't get accurate information this way? No. No, you can't. Yeah. Who'd have thunk? (sighs) 